In the constantly changing world of fundability, the big question is this. How are entrepreneurs and real estate investors like us, ones who want to grow our businesses and who are tired of paying for really expensive alternative lending, how do we tap into the most inexpensive money available and do it without the hassle of typical borrowing? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. Welcome to the Get Fundable Podcast with your host, Merrill Chandler. Welcome back, everybody. Merrill Chandler here, your host of the Get Fundable Podcast. And uh, today we've got a treat. We're going to be talking to one of my uh, m- one of my senior advisors, the Credit Sense uh, advisor team one, um, Delilah Claire is going to be joining us today. And she, we're going to be talking about so, some personal, uh, uh, choices that she made that are actually high impact choices on her fundability, et cetera. So, uh, when we get back, we will jump right to it. So stay right where you are. We'll see you in a second. Welcome back everybody. All right. So in this episode, we're talking about, um, uh, name changes. And so I'd like to introduce to, uh, to you Delilah Claire, who is one of our, uh, one of Credit Sense's the top um, advisors. And she's been with us for years now. And she has, uh, I mean, uh, anybody who's listening, uh, our funding hackers, our boot campers, our, our clients who are listening, you guys know Delilah from, from um, years of, of, of faithful optimization and fundability coaching. So we're going to be talking, but this time it's not about what we're doing for others or what, how, how you're serving others, but how you're actually, uh, how you are investing in, in op- fundability optimization for yourself, right? Right. I figured it was about time. <laughs> yeah, right. So uh, a little background, every one of our team members, uh, part of being a part of our team, and part of the credit sense team is to exp- is to actually go through fundability optimization, both mm-hmm. personally, and we recommend that people even do their own QFE, right? Their own qualified fundable entity. We're going to cover all that because uh, Delilah is uh, literally rounding third base on on uh, this for herself. But so tell tell me a little bit. Tell our tell our audience a little bit about why I picked you for this particular episode about name changes, et cetera. Go, give us a little bit of background. Well, um, I've been advisor with Advisor Team One for a couple of years now, and as part of my recent divorce, I had an opportunity to change my full name. And I saw that and figured it was time for a change for myself. And so I did that. You previously knew me as Catherine Galloway, if any of my <laughs> so, clients are watching. Uh, so I, so we jokingly say around here, it's the, um, it's, uh, Delilah, the artist formerly known as Catherine. So yep. when it comes to, so it was for personal reasons. Mm-hmm. Now you guys remember there is in every instance, a, a, a name change, legal or otherwise, or practical, uh, comes for multiple reasons. Mm-hmm. It, it in this case, um, you took uh, the divorce model to the uh, to the extreme, right? Yeah. Instead yeah. of taking back your maiden name, you went to a name you wanted to be known by for the rest of your life, right? Exactly. Yeah, I'm actually a, a writer in my spare time, and I had chosen Delilah Claire as my pen name years ago, and I decided, you know what, that sounds good to me. I'm going with that. So she, her nom de plume is actually going to be your full-time name, right? Yeah, exactly. So, but remember, there some of you are getting married. Some of you are coming from a foreign country and coming into the United States there, that precipitates a name change. Some people want, uh, rather than having uh, a name, we had one client who literally had like uh, 17 consonants in their last name and he wanted to change his name to something a little more intelligible um to um american you know english speakers and so these 17 consonants ended up into into like jackson or something right so it doesn't matter why you're changing your name doesn't matter what matters is that you there is a protocol for doing so and that's why that's why uh, delilah's on with us to to kind of to reinforce, um, I'll be talking theory and she'll be talking about how it, t- it translated. How it actually went. <laughs> yeah. You know, what, what, what the pitfalls were, because I haven't changed my, I mean, there's a lot of people who call me a lot of things, <laughs> so, but I have not formally changed my name. So, all right. So tell us, first of all, it was Catherine Galloway. Mm-hmm. 
Yep. And you've been, you, originally, uh, we've been working for over a year and a half on the Catherine Galloway, optimizing under Ka Catherine Galloway, right? Yep. But so, so one of the first things we tell our clients uh, and our boot camp uh, funding hackers is that the first step is to update your name with your creditors <laughs> which right? i did <laughs> so tell us about so tell us about that because you're not going from Catherine galloway to Catherine miller or whatever right funny my maiden name is actually mailer so mailer right I, on there. hey i didn't even know that <laughs> look how good i am so so tell us about the experience of and the kind of conversations you had because remember mr jackson with 17 consonants in his former name and we've got uh, one uh, one of my dear friends um uh uh, uh brie is actually getting married in the summer she's a former uh, one of our uh, former advisors and she's getting married and is wrestling with the change the name financially or not change the name financially so it happens to all of us for uh, many of us for different reasons so tell us about updating well first of all tell us the first step i guess is how did you you chose the name for, as, from your nom de plume right mm -hmm. your pen name then then what did you do so um, I've actually gone through this process a couple of times now. I changed my last name when I got married. And then I, when I started with Credit Sense, I updated my name format to show my middle initial. So I've literally done every possible <laughs> variation of this process. Going to the Social Security Administration <laughs> and going times. from middle name to yes. the middle, to middle, middle initial. Yep. So I've done that. That process is way easier than changing your full name. So be warned on that. Um, but so... When I decided to change my name, pick the name, I got it put in my divorce decree as a court issued document. In order to legally change your name, you do have to have some sort of court issued document or you have to go to court and So go. tell us what the ju the conversation was it just a judge signed it and sent mm -hmm. it off to you or yeah. cuz sometimes they we've had clients go where they actually had to, to substantiate the reason for the name change that's yep. on the form so you didn't even have to meet with the judge or a clerk or anybody else they it, they just nope. authorized it over the phone so take it so follow her lead <laughs> it, you don't have to go in unless they require it but they do on the court documents they do want a, an official reason as to why they have done that now mm -hmm. um a, 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 a to throw in a little bit of that I said I haven't done a name change, but that's technically not true. Well, I'm a I'm a junior. Mm -hmm. or I, I'm not a junior. I share the exact same name, Merrill Ray Chandler, with my dad. Mm -hmm. But because uh, we've had merge files over t over uh, time, when I was building this entire part of the process, I went to uh, uh, the states defer state government defers mm -hmm. to the federal government. Mm -hmm. So I actually w submitted a a, a a name change to my the, when I renewed my passport. That's right. Mm -hmm. And the passport said they will go truncate the name to R instead of Ray if I did um, if there was a good reason. Mm -hmm. So I put out that the reason was because I was always confused with my dad and I wanted to adopt this particular name. So I didn't go to court, but I got it on the passport document. So that is something that is possible for you guys as well. And then I took my passport to the state of Utah, which gave me Merrill R. Chandler. So I'm one of the few people who okay. got to change the, the driver's license to Merrill R because the Real ID yeah. Act and formerly the Patriot Act didn't allow us to change middle names. So okay. that is kind of a workaround. But when you know the rules of the game, guys, you can play the game to win, right? <laughs> so you, now th there's one version and her version was to actually go to court fill out the documentation as to the justifiable reason for doing so. Well, for me, realistically, having the divorce, that by itself was enough because they pretty much expect people, they give people the option in a divorce to go back to their maiden name. Maiden name regardless. But you don't have to use your, middle, your maiden name. You can change it to whatever you want at that point. They don't care as long as they know what it is and it's on a court signed document. So you're telling me that if I get a divorce, <laughs> I'm not married. You're telling me <laughs> if I get a divorce, I can use that as my name to, uh, as the opportunity to change my name to Stephen Dan's or or or, um, or um, any other thing that I wished. I mean, yeah. Technically, I, I literally just did that. <laughs> I don't so, even have a middle name anymore. I took out my middle name completely and changed it to something that has nothing to do with my maiden name, my married name, none of that. Very good. So yeah, we'll get to that. So <laughs> you, so then you filed the documents. Mm -hmm. Then what was your next step? What did you do next with those court documents to? because your your credit profile is over here under Catherine Galloway. So we're mm -hmm. going to 
we're going to make our way to that. Mm -hmm. What was your next step after the court documents? So once I had the, the signed court divorce decree, then the next step from that was to go to the social security office, um, get my name changed on that. And then it was the DMV. Okay. So. And then. <laughs> It was a lot of fun because I also moved at the same time. So I also had to update <laughs> my address for the So the name license. and the address, uh, uh, the previous episode, one of the previous episodes, we called the names were changed to protect the innocent. And that's because we changed it from um, our UFable podcast to the Get Fundable because we wanted to protect the innocent ears out there, <laughs> right? But you're actually changing your name. So that as a complete makeover of your identity to put the old, the past behind you mm -hmm. and bring you into uh, bring you up in into your end game is uh, to continue to be an author right yep. continue to write and uh, and uh, 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 and take ownership of that entire part of your life which I I, I fully we want um, we want our teammate members to always have the uh, an amazing outside of work experience because then you bring awesome yeah. The, to, to your, your clients, your students and to, and to us. Right. Exactly. All right. So w were there any bumps in the road or anything at the DMV because you were having a, uh, a, an address change as well? Oh yeah. That was a fun one. The social security office took five minutes, whatever. I had the court documents. They were cool with it. The DMV, or I guess in Utah, it's the DLD here for the driver's license division. Yes. Yeah. That. <laughs> I made an appointment ahead of time. I filled out the application with all my information ahead of time, got to meet with somebody real quick. And the first time I went in okay, there, the key word first, first time, <laughs> first time I went in there, they were, they got my name right on the temporary driver's license. They got my address wrong. My current address is just a different apartment number from my previous one. So that happened. It looks like a typo, <laughs> but it's actually a new address. It's a completely different address. And so they messed up the address. So then they had to reprint the temporary license again with my correct address on it. That time I didn't check to confirm my name was right because they had already had it right before. My mistake, they had put my first name. I know, I know. No, no, I'm saying <laughs> I, I failed. Uh, remember my Wells Fargo. I yep. failed to verify the information they put down. Stop trusting anybody to do anything. Verify your documentation. At least three times. Everything. <laughs> At least, hey, you know she's an advisor, right? At least three times. Yes, you have to make sure. You have to because double check they, everything. Because they did your name wrong and got your address right. Yes, okay? on the second time. <laughs> so they got my first name as it used to be and then my correct current last name on the driver's license so I was like that's not right I oh so it was Catherine Claire Ca Catherine Claire and I was that's like that's not cool bad. I mean that's not bad but, right just yeah. call me Delilah for short <laughs> right didn't work but I didn't realize that the name was wrong until about an hour later after like I had gone to the vape store or something and I noticed my name was wrong I was like oh great because they wouldn't sell me vape products because, because it wasn't a perfect it, it wasn't your identity right exactly guys that it happened to me i failed to, to to review the documentation she failed to review the documentation this is a cautionary tale we're telling you you got you can't believe or trust the document pro, uh, the, the provision process Exactly. The DP, the <laughs> DPP. But you've got to make sure that you create the, the clarity so that they're only filing because you, then you got to change it. But now if they've, if there's any reporting going on at all, it's going to end up with additional uh, aliases, additional names on your profile. So, yep. all right. So it took three times. Tell us about the third time. Third time I went back in, I asked to speak with a supervisor at the DMV because I did not want to go through waiting in line for another three hours because it was packed by that point. And so I was like, okay, I'm done. Supervisor got to them. I was like, so I was just here about an hour ago. My name is not right. Can we fix this? The address is right now, but we need my name to be fixed. There's no middle name. People don't seem to understand when you don't have a middle name anymore. They, they well, this is weird. Utah. That's got, true. It's just whack in Utah <laughs> about the variations on the spellings of names. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> um, but no one's commented except for you on the way I spell Delilah. So okay. there's that. Delilah is <laughs> not the biblical spelling, even though she has biblical roots. There is no... Delilah is not at the biblical spelling, but I'm going to go with your, I'm going to go with your, uh, the, your chosen name. I'm just adopted it. I'm not Good. pushing back anymore. Good. I appreciate it. <laughs>
<laughs> Although like, I did notice like I on your calendar any... it was spelled wrong. <laughs> oh, snap. Okay. So, yeah. Oops, my bad. But, I'll talk to my producer about spelling it correctly, <laughs> on, even though I put it on there. Yeah, I know Sorry, you did. <laughs> You're the only one that spells it wrong. <laughs> but um, so I finally got it right. Got the social security card within a week of ordering it. Took probably three weeks to get my driver's license from the DMV. DLD. Did you have the gold star on it? I did, yes. She, okay, you, we've talked about this. We're going to be doing an entire episode, Miss um, Producer, on all of uh, – on the – uh, on the, um, uh, not privacy act, the, the, the real, ID re act? real ID act. I keep thinking, I think like real sour cream, real, you know, the real ID act. We're going to be doing an, a, a podcast episode on what it means to you. And we're always checking uh, many of my team members. I haven't gotten mine back yet. I haven't gotten a, a I can't a star. imagine why, Meryl. We've talked about this. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna I'm doing an experiment and we'll do a podcast on on when it is that I get a real ID act because apparently, yeah, this episode's not Next about time. me. So we're um so you third time they changed it, three weeks to get it back, and then you had and it was a real ID. So she can now continue to fly past October first, twenty twenty. Yep. So then what was your next step? So I know I should have done this as my next step, but it would have been my passport would have been <laughs> okay, the next step. This is an instant of do as I say, not, not as, as I, I do. do. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I know I will get my passport updated, but it hasn't been updated since my maiden name. And I lived in Wyoming at that point. So I'm just dreading that whole process. Stay tuned for an update on that. Okay. There we go. <laughs> um, but yeah, so after I finally got my driver's license, I got my social security card. My next step was to update my checking account. The one that I use the most, and so, so I, this is personal banking traffic, mm -hmm. et cetera, for her her, her business her personal accounts. Yes, um, so I my I bank with USA, and so I called them up. I was like, "Hey, I've changed my name as per my divorce. I've moved. I need to update with you guys with all my information, and I have everything with them: my insurance, right. my checking accounts, all of that." And so, okay, they started me with the auto insurance team, and I had to send in the divorce decree, the driver's license, the social, <laughs> to the auto insurance, then my life insurance, and then my um, uh, checking account and savings account. Right. So I had to send it to four different places all within the same bank because apparently they don't communicate with each other. Now we know that. <laughs> same organization, completely different divisions, all of them holding their own records mm -hmm. on, on this. So when you're syncing up a, a lender or one of your banking and financial relationships, you got to make sure that every version, you can't just update the checking account, right. what you're saying. Mm -hmm. you're checking, your credit card division, your business credit card, everybody has to get on the same yep. uh, because they may not always have the same data, uh, data points, correct? Exactly. That, that's good to know. I'm glad you brought that up. Yes. Um, and I also did ask them to remove any previous address and name information they had on file for me. So I wanted to make sure that this was my identity with them and they didn't keep the record <laughs> awesome. of previous names. So that was cool. Um, and they were really awesome about getting it all updated really quickly. Once I had financial um, relationship, financial responsibility proof of everything, my next step was then to start updating credit cards, loans, all of that. That's been fun. <laughs> All right. So tell us about, because there's the theory of it, right? In the boot camp. If you haven't been to the boot camp, go to getfundablebootcamp.com and get registered. You got to know the ins and outs. We literally go through this process of how to, how to do all this. But, and there are some tips and techniques you need to know because even knowing all the things you need to do. You coach on this to clients yeah. all the time, right? And yet it can still go sideways if we don't know what to look out for. Oh, absolutely. And it's, I find it hilarious and ironic in myself because I've been doing this for years, coaching clients on how to do it. I had never done it myself with my other name when I first right. started that. And then going through the process now that I had legally changed my name and had to go through the process of updating everybody because otherwise stuff's going to hit the fan. It's not going to be good. Um, it's not easy. <laughs> now I know that it's not easy. Um, and yeah. even more, Hey, for all the clients, walk, guys, we've been doing this for years with dozens of, of, uh, advisors over the years. But the thing is there, there's a great deal of compassion that comes from being able to come from that space yourself. That's yeah. why we make everybody go through the process. Credit Sense Advisors, 
have to do the process themselves. So, and, but changing from Merrill R to Merrill Ray to Merrill R is not the same experience as a married name or a, going back to your maiden name or in your case, a legal, complete legal name change. Yeah. Like when I had gone through the process with just updating my middle initial or even my married name change, it was nothing like this because they had no reason to believe that I was who I said I was anymore. <laughs> like first name wasn't the same. Manual underwriting. Yeah. Like my lenders had no idea. So they needed extra verification of everything, yeah. which is why I had to submit the um, court ordered divorce decree to everybody. My social security card went to everybody. I had to mail those and my driver's license. I was sketched out. I was not excited about that, but I did it so far. Go USPS <laughs> coming through with that hard, the, the, the uh, a snail mail version. Yeah. See, <laughs> and, this. and I had had to, I had called all of my lenders to update it. I had submitted all the documents online. I had done everything short of faxing it because who uses fax anymore? But apparently lenders do. Um, <laughs> so I submitted everything online. My student loans are still waiting to get back to me, even though I submitted that weeks ago. Those are a nightmare. Um, well, because they're government back. Yeah. So they're actually checking against the social security, which was the first and easiest to update, but they still have to fact check that you are, because the, the, the whole thing here, guys, is there are lots of ways that you can't game this because there are so many um, uh, 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 speed bumps and landmines in the process because they, they want to verify. They believe people change their names, right? But we want to make sure that it's not a process. And they've made it a process that you can't just game the system. Yeah. They're like, oh, snap. Um, we'll get to it in a second, but so, so updating the, yep. the creditors and you're still in the process of that. And how many, how, how many weeks, months has it been? Um, since I finally got my driver's license, it's been about a month, but I was able to start the process a little bit before I had my actual printed like copy license. I had the temporary one before. So I was using that to update them at first, the after calling, sending in the documents online, then finally mailing them my credit cards have my revolving accounts have finally updated my information and they're sending me my new cards. I should have those today. Fingers crossed loans, a lot trickier. I learned like we, we coach car clients to update their revolving accounts and their installment loans as well. But I had no idea how much of a pain in the butt it is to update your installment loans. Yeah. And, and um, let's talk a little bit of theory there. You, do you know why it's more difficult? Revolving accounts are literally are open accounts. Mm -hmm. And so they're in, the information is always open. An installment loan is a slice in time. You mm -hmm. literally sign a document. That document goes over there and it's done. And then it could be serviced by the same company or serviced by somebody else. But who you pay your yeah. bills to or make the payments to may not necessarily be the same division that holds that promissory note, that installment loan in their hot little hand. Yep. So you actually have to go back and amend the original loan document so that it's legally binding for you to a pay it and it get mm -hmm. credited to the right account. Otherwise it's, it's uh, Delilah Claire sending $295 checks to some random lenders like WTF MF. Wow. Where are we going to, where do we yeah. put this? They have to update the original promissory note with hard copy amendments. And you had to sign docs uh, for, for in that updating process, correct? Yes. Yeah, so my I'm actually leasing a Volkswagen. Oh, my God. And I have a co-signer on the Volkswagen. It's awful. They, I called them and I was like, hey, I had this name change. I've moved. I need to update my account with you guys. Um, with this information and this woman on the phone, bless her heart, she listed off all of these different documents she was going to send me, told me I need to sign everything. It's basically a power of attorney thing. You need to have your co-signer sign it. You need to go to the DMV. You need to get the title and all this stuff. And I was just like, I'm uh, leasing this car. What's happening? I haven't talked to my co-signer in three years. What? Yeah. Like, so I got all those documents and stuff. And then actually funny story yesterday, they called me cause my lease is almost up in a couple of months and they're, they've got all these deals and stuff going on. And I was like, well, I want to keep the car mostly cause I went over my mileage on it and there might be a couple things in it, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I'm over mileage and please ignore that larger than a golf ball site. That's to be fair. It wasn't all. my fault. <laughs> yeah. No, right? But yeah. So I plan on keeping the car anyway. Um, and with it being a lease, I'm going to have to pay back all that 
stuff in alone, basically. And so I knew that, but I have an appointment today to go in there, submit all the documents and stuff, and hopefully be done with that, get the name changed and all that stuff taken care of, maybe even get it into a loan instead of a lease today. So that's my plan. So, so, so her optimization, her fundability optimization for her personal uh, por uh, 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 installment loan portfolio is still in flux, right? We're still working on that. A so month congratulations. Later, yeah. But notice that she is literally, guys, she's going down every single, notice how we talk about updating your PBID and making it happen. So now let's get to the, the what's happening on your personal borrower profile. What's happening on both your credit report and on the, uh, the other financial relationships that you have. How is that getting translated into your, uh, uh, your profile? Well, the cool thing is my PBID has pretty much one name, one address. All of that is pretty much synced up across the board with the bureaus. The problem is I can't pull a report. FICO can't verify my identity because I don't have at least two revolving accounts and two installment loans reporting they have, to them It's yet. only been a month since you've been updating it, so they don't have any real-time data under Delilah Claire. Exactly. And so with that, that will be forthcoming. But isn't this but it isn't this cool, right? It's really enlightening. Like um, I've talked to clients all the time where they're having trouble pulling their Equifax report or FICO's not reporting this or FICO's not reporting that, or we have people who are credit builders who don't have anything yet. And now I'm experiencing exactly what they're going through. And oh my gosh, so much respect for you guys right now. <laughs> um, it's yeah. one thing to coach from the theory of it all. It's another to be in the trenches with your clients and saying, hey, move over, man. I'm in this <laughs> trench too. And we're going to do this together, right? So well exactly. done. It's got to have created some extra heft to your coaching, right? Because, it has. Because you now not just feel. And sometimes um, a, a credit sense coaching clients have found that sometimes they, it, the progress slows down because they're waiting a month yeah. for updates and stuff like that. So be patient. Uh, uh, credit sense clients, funding hackers, boot campers, you guys got to you, be patient. This process, uh, I, a long time ago, I watched the movie. I love this quote. It says, the oxen are slow, but the earth is patient. Okay, so noodle on that one. But that's just it. Sometimes it takes time, but the results are amazing. The results are amazing. We're doing a boot camp uh, coming up here this weekend. And in one of my office hour calls, we just got some amazing intel on what's happening on a couple of uh, clients nice. that I get, now get to translate to the boot camp. So awesome. you guys got to make... Got, Get the book at uh, getfundablebook.com if you haven't gotten it. Go to getfundablebootcamp.com and register. Get, uh, whatever it is, guys, do your find out more because we it's step by step by step on the, to go through the process that you've already trudged through for the last uh, 30, 60 days, right? Yeah, it's it's been a trip. It's been really humbling. Like as an advisor, you go through the process with your clients and. You think, okay, we just, we're waiting on this. I want to get you moving towards fundability. Let's go. And then you actually experience it and you're like, oh, no wonder it's taken them six months to get through this. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, the more egregious the, the, the problems, the more we got to work through, but it is worth it. It, it is. is worth it. It is worth it. So has it been, has it been worth it? I mean, I can't say for sure yet, <laughs> we, but maybe we should have waited until we, <laughs> for this episode, when we had at least one new, uh, one of your accounts reporting, but well, I, I mean, I will say it has been a really cool experience just to see what my consumer disclosures look like from the bureaus. Just seeing that like Catherine Galloway and Catherine Mailer don't exist anymore. <laughs> Complete, like, if you're looking gone. to put a, a a toxic relationship behind you, this is a great way to do that. Yeah. And it's realistically, and I went about it that way in my head, just total life change, new everything in my life. Yes, exactly. And that's what it ended up being for me. And so just seeing all of that psychic drag on my uh, consumer disclosures, completely gone, name gone, old addresses gone from 10 years ago, all of it. It was really cool. I really liked seeing that. Now I will, I will forecast. So here's what happens because uh, some things haven't changed. They're not going to change social security. Right. They're not going to, her date of birth hasn't changed um, because those would be tough to get by a, uh, to buy a judge, right? You'd be right. like, and your honor, I actually need a new birthday. I've decided <laughs> to choose February 14th of 2020. I know I'm 30 years old, but I thought I'd 
just choose that day for my birthday. Though I choose not, not gonna... to identify as a millennial anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, I choose not to. De- <laughs> I choose not to identify as a millennial. So see, they're not gonna. So some of the data points are going to stay the same. So all of her credit, it, uh, all of her trade lines, all of her revolving accounts, all of her installment loans are ultimately going to make the transition. Right. This isn't a way to like change no. your name and then dodge uh, old bills and old no. things like that. That, that's why they're making you, they're, they're connecting the dots and make you re-sign loan docs, make you, making sure that who you say you are continues to be, because they've got copies of your old driver's license. Yeah. They're looking at your face there, right? Um, the, the magenta, <laughs> the, the, pink, the, the pink hair <laughs> over the green hair. Yeah. She is, our, she is definitely our most creative uh, uh, advisor when it comes to personal style. And we love her at, at the office, love your style, love your contribution. Uh, love your smile. So, um, what? So there. Just be aware. I, I say good luck, but don't even try it because there are too many data points that are, have to be correlated. So all of her accounts are going to end up back here. But the good news is, is that you've left the the things behind that you want to leave behind, which, like you said, cleans up our psychic drag. How many times, guys, have we talked about psychic drag and choosing? to take the winds and leaving leaving our, uh, the 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 backpack of rocks that we have accumulated over our lifetimes leaving them behind and feeling more free to do so so any 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 parting um uh, sage advice to uh, somebody who this is the first episode they've ever seen they have no idea what we're talking about fundability what <laughs> or the uh, the our 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 funding hacker boot campers our clients what would you tell them about the value of this of this process oh that's a tough one honestly it's been a great experience for me not just for my overall fundability as a as an advisor as a person it's been a great experience. So if you're going through some stuff and you feel like you need a change, get a name change. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of work, but it's worth it. <laughs> I love it. So I went and talked to the, I went and listened to this Fundability podcast and they told me to change my name. <laughs> and it sounds actually pretty good. I don't even write books, but I, all of a sudden I think I needed a name change. But the, the, the value of syncing up your data and knowing the process for me, for me as a, as a high performance fundability coach, right? Train, training uh, her and her teammates on advisor teams for credit sense, our boot camps, et cetera. Every word that comes out of our mouths is designed to make you fundable exactly. and you can't be fundable unless you've got a dialed in PBID, exactly. personal borrower identity, unless that, and it has nothing to do with just your credit report. Right. It's the identity, it's the identifying data points that all everybody is using now in automatic underwriting. Exactly. Yeah. And the more synced up you get those, the better off you're going to be, the more chance you have to get into automatic under, underwriting. I will add one caveat though. Don't just change your name without knowing the rules of the game. Um, maybe learn those rules first, then we can play to win. Yeah. <laughs> Sage <laughs> advice. That's the advice I was looking for. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on, on the yeah. podcast and, uh, and, uh, yeah, it's been fun. I have a, gr- I have a, I have great people. <laughs> I've got, I'm surrounded by amazing. The, uh, thank you so much for the work you do with, uh, the, the credit sense clients with uh, your contribution when you're at the boot camps and, you know, wait, weighing in on the, on the, the tech trainings and all the ways in which you show up. Thank you so much for being part of our, part of our team and, and the mad skills you have in coaching uh, all the credit sense clients. So guys, this is Meryl Thanks, Chandler, guys. your, uh, your host of the get fundable podcast. And I'm telling you, uh, keep binging, keep going. There is so yes. much to, there's so much to know and so clear a path to dodge the funding landmines and, and making your identity fundable is like one of the biggest um, minefields that exists out there. So, mm-hmm. Make it happen. Thank, thank you again, Delilah. Thanks, and, Carol. Spelled with an H. And um, <laughs> we will make sure that, uh, and we will talk to you guys soon. You guys have a spectacular morning, afternoon, or evening. Peace. Thank you for listening to the Get Fundable podcast. Please leave comments because Meryl would love to read about your aha moments from this episode. 
And be sure to visit GetFundable.com to read our blog, get important links, join our community, and much, much more, like ordering Merrill's tell-all book that is changing the world, The New F Word. And you got to tell your friends about this podcast, because we want them to get fundable too.